So good morning, everybody. A welcome to the BioExcel webinar series. Now we have a, a webinar number 48. We start again with this Atom section. And uh, the talk of today will be on uh, computational biomolecular simulation workflow with BioExcel building blocks. And our speaker of today is Adam Hospital from the Institute for Research in Biomedicine, Barcelona. Today's speaker and the person that will start the new, the autumn series of the BioExcel webinar is Adam Hospital. Adam is a postdoctoral fellow in molecular modeling and bioinformatic unit at the Institute for Research in Biomedicine in Barcelona. But in the meantime, he's also a researcher software engineering at the Spanish National Institute for Bioinformatics. So we can say that Adam starts from a computer science background and then he moved to bioinformatics world. And then he was fascinated by the structural aspect of the bioinformatics. He's involved in different projects, both at the, the, uh, the Institute for Research in Biomedicine in Barcelona, but also in the Supercomputer Center in Barcelona and is leading the workflow team at BioExcel. So he got also in the meantime, he was working in as a software engineering. He got his PhD in biotechnology at the University of Barcelona. We can say that it, and it is also developer of public web server, a database, among those we can do, we can see, we can find MD Web, NAFLEPS, Big NASIM. And now I will be happy to see what he will tell us. Okay, fantastic. So thank you, Alessandra. Um, and uh, welcome to all the attendees and thank you for being here today with us in this webinar. I will talk about the computational biomolecular simulation workflows that we are building with the BioExcel building blocks library. Uh, I have divided the presentation in these uh, different sections that you see here. I will start with a brief introduction on the BioExcel Center of Excellence. Uh, for the ones that are still not familiar with it, uh, I will uh, give an update on what uh, we understand uh, the current work on the biomolecular workflows. Uh, what we are work, what we are developing, uh, our library, the BioXL building block software library, um, and then I will explain you and will show you examples of uh, biomolecular workflows using this library, built using this library, uh, two different, really different uh, kind of workflows, uh, demonstration workflows built with Jupyter notebooks and pre-exascaled HPC workflows. Uh, built uh, or uh, managed by uh, PyCom software uh, in supercomputers. And uh, if we have time, I will show you an example of uh, a work that we are uh, doing with these pre scale workflows in the COVID-19 related research. So starting from the beginning, we started in the BioXL Center of Excellence. This Center of Excellence is uh, a project, an European Horizon 2020 project that started in the year 2016, so four years ago, uh, with the motto of uh, becoming the central hub for biomolecular modeling and, and simulations. And for that, uh, and I hope that you can see my pointer, uh, more than 15 different European partners joined together, all of uh, us coordinated by the KTH uh, in Sweden, to work on the connection between the life science and, and HPC. Uh, and basically working on this area of expertise, so going from the atomistic models to small molecules, macromolecules, and reaching the cell uh, unit, using tools such as uh, molecular mechanics, quantum mechanics, and this kind of biomolecular uh, research. Our main objective is uh, to enable better science, and we are doing that uh, basically improving the performance and functionality of uh, a set of key applications that, that I will introduce in the next slide, providing support to non-experts and advanced users, and finally developing user-friendly and computational workflows. This point is it's the one that we are more interested on, and this is why we have created this library and we are uh, today all together uh, in this uh, webinar. So. The key applications that we have uh, in our BioExcel Center of Excellence uh, are 
very popular uh, tools in this field. I, I'm sure that you will recognize them. For molecular dynamics, we have Chromax. For the free energy calculations, we have PMX. For the docking, not only protein protein, but also protein ligand and protein uh, uh, DNA. Uh, we have Haddock. And for the QMMM, QM and QMMM calculations, we have CPMD and CP2K. Uh, all of these uh, key applications uh, are developed by partners that are involved in the BioXL project. We also have support, so we have a lot of uh, webinars, as this one, training events, conferences, workshops, industry visits, and we have a forum where you can, in this ask.bioxl.eu, where you can uh, please uh, and formulate any kind of questions that you want uh, in this key application, but also in general in the biomolecular computational field. And of course, using these key applications, what we want is to design, deploy, and make available uh, biomolecular workflows. And when we started the project, we thought that we should do that uh, looking at the usability. So we wanted to change the way that we were building these biomolecular workflows, and for that, we partnered with this uh, Elixir European, big European project uh, to start uh, trying to follow a set of best practices in software development to uh, build this workflow. So that means that our workflows should be easy to use, uh, available in different uh, uh, platforms, in different infrastructures, uh, uh, able to be reproduced in different uh, machines in an easy way. And for that, uh, a set of uh, these uh, partners in BioXL started to work on uh, on the library that I will present today. So a little bit about uh, information about biomolecular workflows and what uh, we think that biomolecular workflows are. When we started the project, we, we uh, sit and start a brainstorming with uh, all our colleagues. And uh, I'm sure that you also uh, share this uh, thing with me, the biomolecular simulation workflows are usually built from a number of tools um, that perform different tasks. And if you think about one uh, workflow that you are now using in your everyday work, you can maybe, uh, you have maybe to download the structure from using a REST API, you maybe need to uh, convert between different formats, you need some kind of modeling if you want to start a molecular dynamics, or maybe you are interested in quantum mechanics, you will need to uh, choose which of the programs available you will uh, you are interested in using. Maybe you are performing QMMM. On the resulting trajectories, you uh, for sure want to analyze something, extract information from uh, these uh, trajectories. Maybe you are thinking about uh, doing some docking, free energy, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of different functionalities. And when you think about these functionalities, I'm sure that you, in the reality, what you are thinking about is something like that. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm going to work with uh, molecular dynamics and I'm going to use Amber for that, or maybe Gromax for that, or maybe NAMD. And on the resulting trajectory, I'm going to visualize it using VMD, uh, maybe extracting information also with VMD, or maybe using CPP track from Amber tools. Um, or maybe I'm interested in small molecules and I'm uh, going to use OpenBubble as a chemoinformatics package, uh, parameterize uh, the, a small molecule using ACPAP, you know, a lot of different tools that we are uh, familiar with because we are working with them every day and many, many more. This is just an example. And at the end, what we are doing, most of the scientists working in this field, what we are doing is uh, to build a shell script like this. So in the step one, I'm uh, running a command line, uh, one of the tools uh, performing one particular functionality, uh, something that I'm interested on. For example, a REST API, I'm downloading a PDB file from the PDB uh, database. In the second step, maybe I am generating a topology using one of these uh, molecular dynamics programs, et cetera, et cetera, till we uh, end up in the last step of the of our workflow. Uh, of course, this has a lot of problems, a lot of problems. And you can think about uh, usability. Uh, the one that develops this JavaScript understands this script, but it's really difficult to uh, uh, teach how this JavaScript works and why the step one is doing what it's doing and the step two is doing what it's doing, even if you put a lot of comments between the different steps. 
Uh, interoperability is another big, big problem here. So the upwards of the first step uh, don't need to be uh, compatible with the step two. You need to maybe um, change the formats and make them compatible with the second step and the same <clears throat> can happen with the other ones. Portability and reproducibility, as you can imagine, you take this shell script and you move this shell script to another computer. If you don't have the same versions of the same programs installed with the same libraries, these will not work the same way that it's working in your computer. And finally, scalability. If you want to take this script that is working really well in your laptop, but with just uh, molecular dynamics of 10 nanoseconds, if you want to uh, go to the one microsecond or maybe run that 100 times, uh, you need to move that to another uh, computer, maybe a supercomputer, and you will have a lot of scalability problems there. So with all these keywords in mind, we started the, develop the development of a new software library that is called BioXL Building Blocks, and I will explain you um, a little bit about this library in this webinar today. So BioXL Building Blocks is basically a Python wrapper a set of Python wrappers on top of biomolecular uh, simulation tools or biomolecular uh, computational tools. For example, uh, if you think about uh, a particular execution of a particular functionality of a program, for example, uh, build a system box on top of a protein to perform molecular dy dynamic simulation with this box, with this system. Uh, for example, we can uh, choose uh, to work with Gromax molecular dynamics package. We know how to execute that. We know the command line to do that. And we know the local input parameters for this command line. But what we are adding here is a Python compatibility layer. And this Python compatibility layer, what it's doing is to adapt a set of input files and configuration files, which are always the same. They have always the same syn syntax, no matter what program is here in the middle. Uh, and it, do this, it does the same, it, it adapts these inputs to local input parameters, and it does the same with the local output parameters. Uh, it adapts these output parameters to a set of output files and log files, which are always the same, same syntax for all the different building blocks, no matter what is the program that is being executed. And on, I, I will give you examples of that. Don't worry if you don't understand now exactly what I mean by that, but you will understand that for sure at the end of this presentation. Uh, and on top of that, we are building an external layer, which is called Workflow Manager Adaptation Layer. And this new layer is making these building blocks compatible with different workflow managers. And you will also see examples of that during this presentation. Uh, this is important. You have all the information that you need in, the, in this web page here. And you will see this URL in different slides in this presentation. So this is a kind of a summary. We, start with the building blocks, which are wrappers on top of functionalities on different biomolecular tools. And we put together these building blocks, which are really easy to interconnect because of this interoperability layer that we are adding. And we build our biomolecular workflows. And once we have the biomolecular workflows, we launch, we execute these workflows using different workflow managers. And that's thanks to the, uh, the ex external layer of compatibility with these workflow managers which can be graphical user interfaces such as this uh, NIME or Galaxy, if you uh, know about these uh, graphical uh, user interfaces, or Jupyter. But uh, we can also work with HPC Focus, so more um, uh, workflow managers uh, focused on uh, supercomputers such as PyComs or Toil, for example. So different ways to execute and control our workflows. As I was telling you at the beginning, for that we started this collaboration with Elixir, and I don't want you to recognize all of these different logos here, but it just uh, briefly introduce you that the, the library is completely fair. That means that it's findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. And just as an example, you can find you can find the library in the Elixir BioTools repository, software repository. Uh, we have a web page where you can find all the different information. It is indexed in the Open Bench Elixir platform for benchmarking of different software tools. Um, all the source code you can find it in GitHub. We have bio schemas behind all the web pages that we are uh, developing, and also the documentation, so you can find our library uh, easily with uh, search engines like Google, for example. All the documentation is uh, made with these standard initiatives, read the docs, open API, Swagger for the REST API interfaces, common workflow language for our workflows descriptions. 
We are using packaging, and this is really, really important for the reusable and reproducibility of our uh, library, Conda packages, Docker containers, and also Singularity containers. And as you could see uh, in the previous slide, we can run, uh, launch our workflow with different workflow managers. Uh, I'm not going into details about that, but just uh, for you to know that uh, the software best practices that we are following in this library. One uh, of these best practices that are that is really important for us is the Conda environment. And if you are not familiar with uh, with this uh, software, I will strongly recommend you to take a look at it because it's really uh, uh, it's really powerful. Uh, in just one minute, what this Conda software lets you do is uh, a closed environment inside within one uh, particular uh, computer with uh, a set a collection of software libraries and tools installed with particular versions and you can reproduce in a really easy way the same closed environment in another computer and that of course gives you the possibility to run a particular workflow in our case we are interested in workflows using these uh, programs with these versions in the same way in this computer as you uh, do in the other in the in the second computer using the same conda environment so I will not extend on that, but please take a look at the Conda if you are not familiar with it, because it's really, really important. And for us, it's really important for the reproducibility of our workflows. And you will see examples of that. So at the end of the day, what we have is uh, uh, a collection of modules, which gather together different building blocks uh, uh, with a, a particular functionality. So for example, the common is a base package required for uh, all the different building blocks library, but we have a BioEV input output module, which is a collection of building blocks to fetch data from biological databases. We have a molecular dynamics collection to perform setup and run molecular dynamics simulations. In this case, we are using Gromax as it's one of our key applications in BioXL, but we are thinking about adding different packages. Uh, we have an analysis collection to perform analysis over the molecular dynamics simulations that we are running with this module here. We have a collection to perform free energy calculations, wrapping the PMX uh, tool, also one of our key applications in BioXL. We have structure utils to modify or extract uh, information from a PDB and also to convert between different formats, structural formats. We have a collection to check and model structures, uh, a chemistry collection with chemoinformatic analysis, a machine learning one, uh, wrapping uh, popular machine learning algorithms uh, like uh, scikit-learn, TensorFlow, etc., And we are uh, finishing a virtual screening one, uh, a molecular interaction potential one, and we are thinking about different modules. So we are extending the, the library and it's, it's, it's uh, good to know that every time I explain these bioxyl building blocks, I have more and more uh, of these modules. So I will need to extend this slide in two different slides. So we are extending these modules and you can find all the information about these modules in the web page. Uh, those are all the different modules, but if you click on one of these plus icons here, you will find all the building blocks um, uh, that you can find inside of this uh, particular module, which is the analysis one. And you can see clustering, RMS, radius of variation, etc. all different functionalities, which are basically building blocks. If you click on one of these uh, um, names of the building blocks, you will go to the uh, documentation that will explain you everything that you need to know about this uh, building block. And what is important is that you have here uh, links to the source, source code in GitHub, the Python code, documentation and read the docs, the Bioconda package, the Docker container and the Singularity container that contains all, not just the Python wrappers for the, for the building blocks, but for example, in this case, it also contains the dependencies needed for this building block to run. So in this case, in the analysis, that means that the Amber Tools 19 and Gromax will be installed if you uh, just type conda install in your uh, terminal. So this is important, really important for reproducibility. Uh, examples about the syntax. I was telling you before that we have this Python compatibility layer. We have these input files and configuration that are then adapted. So these input files and configuration basically are these inputs, outputs, and properties that we need every time we want to launch one of our building blocks. So this is repeated every time we want to use the building blocks. We need to import the module, define the inputs, outputs, uh, and properties, which are the parameters of the, of the function. 
for the building blocks and to launch a building block. The example is always easy to see. So import the module. We are importing, in this case, the particular building block which builds this uh, system box uh, on top of the protein. We define the inputs and outputs um, files. In this case, you can see that this is just a path, a string with a path uh, with the name, or in this case, of the output file that we need to, we want to produce. Uh, and here we define as a Python dictionary the properties, which are basically the parameters that we need. In this particular case, we want the box to be cubic and we want the distance to molecule to be one nanometer. And then we launch uh, the building block. Inputs, outputs, and properties. Inputs, in this case, is taken the output of the previous step on the workflow. This is basically what we do when we, we uh, develop workflows. Uh, we use as an input for a particular building block the output of the previous building block. And for the output, we take this output that we have defined here and the properties, the dictionary of properties. It is really not complicated, but if you see examples of how we do that, for example, for a mutation, uh, you can see importing the, 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 um, uh, the building block that we need, uh, defining inputs, outputs, and properties. You see that it's exactly the same and launching the building block. In this case, we are mutating a residue using modeler. In this case, we are running a cluster, a clusterization on top of a trajectory. So again, importing uh, uh, the building block, defining inputs, outputs, and properties, and launching uh, the building block. And here, what we are doing is obtaining these cluster uh, centroids, and we can represent them. So it's exactly the same. And basically, if we join together uh, four different building blocks, like uh, these ones that you will understand, because this is not difficult, the first one, uh, again, remember importing the library, defining input outputs and properties, launching the building block. We are uh, downloading using a REST API uh, a small molecule in PDB format, in this case, the ibuprofen one. Here we are adding hydrogens to this uh, structure uh, with the same syntax as before, but now using a building block which is called Babel Add Hydrogens, which is using OpenBubble. Uh, it's wrapping OpenBubble. We are, uh, we uh, can take a look at the intermediate structure using Jupyter Notebook. You will see that uh, in the next slides when I uh, will show you examples on Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, the third step that we are doing here is to minimize the structure of these hydrogen atoms that we have uh, added in the previous step. Uh, again, importing the library, defining inputs, outputs, and properties. In this case, we don't have properties, launching um, the building block. Again, looking at the intermediate results. And finally, we want to parameterize uh, the small molecule using AC pipe. Uh, we import the, the library, we define inputs, outputs, and properties, and we launch this. So we have been using in this mini workflow three different tools, and but the syntax of the building blocks, as you could see, is exactly the same. So it's very easy uh, to use. Um, where you can find information about which inputs and outputs I need to define and which properties and which parameters can I uh, use for a particular functionality or for a part uh, particular building block, you can find that in the do documentation. So each one of our building blocks has a read the docs, a standard documentation with the parameters that, you, that, it, that it accepts, inputs, outputs, and the different properties that you could use. Um, I, I cannot extend more on that because uh, uh, of uh, the time that we have for this webinar, but you can find uh, all the information that you need in the uh, scientific data paper that we published a year ago. Uh, and uh, just to tell you that the European Commission has identified uh, this library as uh, one of the high potential innovations uh, from uh, innovation tools from European funded uh, research, such as the BioXL uh, Center of Excellence. Uh, as I was telling you before, uh, the workflows that we are producing with this library can be launched in many different workflow managers. Here you have just examples of them, common workflow language, uh, using the REST API, using command line, using graphical user interfaces such as Galaxy or Nime, and even we are developing a web server so that you can uh, uh, use pre-configured workflows and run them uh, with a connection with HPC machines. We don't have time again in this webinar to take a look at all of the different versatility uh, uh, workflow managers that we can use, but I have centered uh, this presentation in two. 
examples. The first one, demonstration workflows, workflows to play, to start with the library uh, using Jupyter Notebooks. And the second one, completely different from the previous one, pre-exascale workflows or so workflows uh, um, designed to be used in uh, uh, supercomputers like this Mare Nostrum one from the Barcelona Supercomputing Center, which are controlled by uh, a software that is called PyComs and it's, mm, are able to use uh, thousands of cores uh, in one single job, you will see. Uh, we start with the first one, so demonstration workflows uh, using um, Jupyter Notebooks. Why we chose Jupyter Notebooks, uh, uh, I think that they are really, it is a great tool in general because it's a fantastic tool for training. Um, you can inspect the intermediate results. Uh, in our case, we can inspect the, the molecules in 3D with interactive uh, tools like NGL. Um, we can interactively modify the parameters of the different steps of the workflow. So you just click here, you modify the parameters and you run the cell again. If you are not familiar with uh, uh, Jupyter Notebooks, you have different cells, independent cells that you can run in an independent way. Uh, and you have also the possibility to run the complete uh, Jupyter Notebook in my binder uh, infrastructure. I will tell you something about that in, in uh, a couple of uh, slides. But in, part in particular for the Bioxel building blocks, uh, it is a really good tool, I think, to be familiar, to start playing with the syntax that I have uh, just uh, shown you in the previous uh, slides and to learn how to build these workflows. And for that, we have developed a set of tutorials that are the ones that you have here and you can find them in our web page uh, to start looking at the syntax and how, in how you can uh, uh, join together the different building blocks and build your own workflows. And this is also important. Uh, it's uh, an easy way to see how you can package your workflow using the Conda packages and export this workflow uh, to another uh, machine, infrastructure, uh, etc. And using Conda, you, you will see examples of this. So this is how uh, Jupyter Notebook, one of these demonstration tutorials that we have in the web page looked like. Uh, there's a lot of information, as you can see, this is markdown in the Jupyter Notebook that you can add, information about the building blocks that we use, the libraries, uh, auxiliary libraries that we need. When you go to a particular cell which is running a particular building block, um, you can now identify uh, import of the library, inputs and outputs definition and launching. So it's, uh, remember that it's always the same, so here uh, you have, for example, the generating a topology for a, a Gromax MD package. Here, information about the force field and the water type that is used. Here, the cell that you can execute, and here is the lock uh, that the building block is producing. As I was telling you before, you can uh, check intermediate results. Uh, in this case, this is NGL viewer, but you can rotate and zoom and take a look at the structure, intermediate structure, and this is inside the Jupyter, really nice. Uh, but you can also take a look or generate plots like this one, which is uh, uh, showing you how the energy uh, is decreasing during the energy minimization uh, process, the step of uh, energy minimization inside the inside the, one of the demonstration workflows, which is the molecular dynamic setup tutorial. And this is just to show you that you can uh, uh, integrate in the middle of uh, the building blocks Python code just to uh, extract information from uh, in this case, from an energy um, uh, values output from Gromax and use these values to plot this information in uh, an, in, an interactive flow like this one using the Plotly library. Um, and this is important. Uh, once you have the Jupyter Notebook finished, your workflow in a Jupyter Notebook finished, you can export this Jupyter Notebook uses, using this Conda uh, package. So for that, you just need to create this kind of YAML uh, file, which is called environment.yaml, and you uh, just need to tell here the dependencies of this workflow, which are these three different building blocks modules, common input, output, and chemistry, apart from uh, some auxiliary libraries that is needed to uh, inspect the intermediate results. Uh, you put all of this in one single file, and then just doing this, which is conda environment create with this file, you uh, will so the Conda software will install everything that is needed to run this particular Jupyter Notebook, this particular workflow in another computer. So these seven really easy steps here that you can find in the demonstration workflows that we have in the web page uh, are the ones, the only ones that you need uh, to reproduce 
uh, in this case, this particular workflow, which is the one that I have shown you, uh, um, to automatically uh, parameterize a ligand. You can also use this environment.yaml, these files to, and these conda packages to automatically deploy these Jupyter notebooks in uh, the MyBinder infrastructure. If you are not familiar with that, it's an infrastructure that lets you uh, deploy automatically in the cloud uh, your Jupyter notebooks, install all the dependencies, and uh, you, you let you uh, play with the Jupyter notebook as it, if it was installed in your own machine, just using a browser. Uh, you have four demonstration workflows, and we are working on more different workflows in our web page. You can click on Execute in Binder if you want to uh, directly play with them, but also uh, I invite you to take a look at the tutorial, try to install uh, using these Conda packages in your own machine, and try to play with these different uh, demonstration workflows. Uh, now changing to the second part of the examples, which are the HPC workflows. Uh, in this case, these workflows, as I was telling you before, are prepared to work on thousands of cores at the same time, so nothing to do with these Jupyter notebooks that uh, I have just shown you. Um, starting uh, yet from the Jupyter notebooks, what we can do is to export this uh, Python code this, that is uh, coded inside the Jupyter notebook to a particular Python file, and you can uh, run this Python file in a command line interface, so you can just with little modifications, you can have the command line interface from this Jupyter notebook. But of course, you have these advantages. The graphical cells are not showing, of course. You are losing interactivity, but you gain high throughput. So you can start uh, using this uh, to automate processes, to re repeat the processes with different input files, with different parameters. And the problem uh, basically is that this Python file needs to be modified every time you need to uh, um, modify a certain parameter for a certain step of the workflow. So we uh, thought that uh, a good approximation to run command line interface workflows using the BIOS building blocks would be to uh, split this Python script in two. So we have uh, on, one, on one hand the workflow script in Python and on the other hand a YAML configuration file with a workflow parameter. So here we have the building blocks, the workflow, the Python code, loops and conditional, and so on, the, what is, defines the workflow, and here what defines the parameters of the workflow, so inputs and outputs of the step, dependencies between the steps, and the properties, which are the configuration files that you uh, saw in the previous slides. And you have also uh, global workflow inputs and uh, parameters. Example that is always easy to understand with examples. This is a very easy sequential MD setup where you download the PDB, uh, fix the missing sidechain atoms, generate the topology, all of that with Gromax, generate the system box, solvate the box, uh, generate the counter ions and add the counter ions and minimize the, the structure. So all of these are building blocks from the BioXL building block library. And this, uh, which is a separated file, which is a YAML file, are all the inputs needed. So inputs are just a PDB code that we want to use uh, for the particular step one dependencies on different steps. So the input of the second step, it's uh, a dependency on the output of the second step. So the input of the second, sorry, of the first step, the input of the second step will be the output of the first step. And here you are defining all these things, which are the parameters of the workflow. We can have more difficult uh, workflow like this one, a little bit more difficult. In this case, we have a, a loop on different mutations that we want to model on the mutations list, and this mutations list is uh, defined in the YAML file, as you can see here. So we can run this basically in the terminal, and it will produce something like that, which is step one and two are common for all the different mutations. But then when you start modeling the different mutations, you have three different folders. Each one of the folders has 24 different steps, which are the steps uh, defining the MD setup and the run of the simulation. Uh, we are, if you remember uh, from our um, diagram of the building blocks, we have this adaptation layer on top of uh, our Python compatibility layer that makes our uh, building blocks and our workflows compatible with different workflow managers. In this case, we are using for the HPC, 
uh, pre-exist scale uh, workflows, we are using PyCons, which is a framework developed in the Barcelona Supercomputing Center. These PyCons, what it does is uh, automatically identify these kind of loops, like this one that you have here. So for all the mutations in our list of mutations, do something, in this case, a molecular dynamic setup. Uh, PyCons is uh, uh, generating a dependency graph, like this one that you can see here, is identifying that we have, in this case, five different mutations which are completely independent one from the other. So we can run these branches totally uh, in parallel. And basically, well, what it ends up doing is something like that, which is using 100% of the CPU of all the nodes that we have reserved for a particular job in the Marinoston supercomputer. This is what PyCOMS is doing, and this is what uh, this is the approximation that we are taking for our pre-exascale workflows, PyCOMS together with the BioXL building blocks uh, workflows. And just to finish, I will finish with an example of uh, how we are applying that uh, in a pre-exascale uh, workflow uh, in a COVID-19 related uh, study. I will go really uh, fast because we don't have time, but uh, I'm sure that you uh, will identify uh, the COVID-19 virus, the spike proteins in red, the RBD receptor binding domain protein coming out of the spike, which is the uh, receptor that is uh, docking to the uh, human ACE protein here. This interface here, one where the RBD is attaching the human ACE protein is the one that we are uh, interested on. This particular interface here, what we are doing is using our chemical free energy calculations of relative protein binding free energy difference. Um, check uh, the influence of particular mutations on the RBD of the virus or on the human ACE2 protein uh, on the free energy of the binding of the two proteins. So basically what we end up doing is this complex, complex uh, workflow that I have no time to uh, go into details. We are extracting two different delta Gs. We are subtracting the delta Gs and obtaining the binding free energy. This can be um, transformed to pre exascale workflows. And again, I'm not going to enter into details, but we have a, a pre exascale workflow to simulate molecular dynamics for different mutations on the RBD, on the humanase, and on the complex, on all the different structures. And with these molecular dynamics simulations, we are running free energy calculations uh, that it means that we are running this non-equilibrium molecular dynamic uh, free energy calculations that involves running 1,000 independent short molecular dynamic simulations using Gromax and PMX. This is extremely parallelizable, and we can transform that into this kind of workflows. This is the first one, equilibrium MD simulations that you can see here. Uh, this is the reality, is how we are using it in the Mare Nostrum. We call a Python script which launches molecular dynamic simulations and models a particular mutation that we are uh, um, stating here. So we want to run the wild type and this particular mutation. And this, what is doing is uh, using bioexplosion logs and PyComs is running all the mutations in all of these nodes. This is a real example, 12 mutations, 10 nanoseconds uh, molecular dynamic simulations. Uh, in more than 2,000 nodes in the Mare Nostrum supercomputer with just eight hours uh, of time. And the same with the free energy calculations on top of these equilibrium simulations that we have performed in the previews uh, using this uh, um, workflow. In this case, we can do exactly the same. You can see that this, uh, the approximation is the same, really easy to understand. And here again, we are using 100% of the CPU of, uh, uh, in this case, uh, 1,500 different nodes. As a summary, uh, the Bioxel building blocks software library offers a new layer of interoperability on biomolecular software tools. Uh, the workflows that we are building with this library are portable and reproducible and can be easily built using this library. Uh, and the uh, external additional software uh, our workflow manager compatibility layer allows uh, these workflows to, to be launched and controlled with different uh, frameworks and be used in different infrastructures. And I have uh, shown you a couple of examples really quick about the demonstration workflows with Jupyter Notebooks and the pre scale HPC workflows, completely different, two different approaches, uh, but using exactly the same workflows behind using the Bioxel building blocks. Just as a bonus track and before finishing, uh, you can build your own building block if you are interested in that. Uh, and you have a particular tool that is not integrated in our library or a particular tool that you have developed and you think 
uh, is interesting for us to have it in our collection. Take a look at this uh, particular section of the web page and you can find all the information that you need to build your own building, work, uh, building block that uh, we will check, of course, uh, and uh, make the appropriate arrangement if uh, needed, and then we will integrate it in our uh, library. Uh, remember, if you don't know, that we have a lot of training <clears throat> in the BioExcel uh, Center of Excellence. So we will have a remote BioExcel Winter School on biomolecular simulation. We will have a new virtual training related to building blocks in November this year. Uh, you have the YouTube um, channel in BioExcel where you will find different examples of uh, how to build workflows using the BioXL building blocks uh, with the Jupyter notebooks, in particular this demonstration workflow. So uh, in one hour, there is no time for everything, but please, if you are interested, take a look at these uh, resources because they are really uh, interesting and useful. Finally, just acknowledgements. Those are the people which uh, really make the work here. So the BioXL building blocks developers, Pau, Janice, Laia, and Luis, the BICOMS developers, Jorge and Rosa, that is the boss, uh, and the coordinators of uh, all of this library and the uh, BioExcel workflows, Modesto and user US. Uh, and now I'll, I would be really happy to take questions from you. Uh, we have a first question from um, Henry Whitler. Uh, Henry, I have unmuted your microphone. If you would like to ask your question, please go right ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, very inspiring talk. Um, I was wondering uh, if uh, is bio is this uh, bio building blocks uh, available in, in or GitHub? Uh, can um, I was wondering which license does it have, and uh, uh, is anyone able to uh, can anyone adapt the, the workflow to work with any programs and software, for example, like material research software? Okay. Uh, is it possible to adapt? Uh, the thinking by copying the code uh, from uh, GitHub. Um, and yes, yes, absolutely. The, the license that we have is Apache 2 in all the different uh, building blocks and in all the different modules. So you can take a look at the <clears throat> GitHub repo of BioXL and you will find all the different uh, modules there. So yes. Uh, yes, I will have a look. So thank you. So yeah, that's good. Thank you for that answer. The next question we have is from Leonardo De, Mar uh, De Maria. Uh, Leonardo, I have unmuted your microphone. If you would like to ask your question, please go right ahead. Yeah, hi, Adam. Thanks very much for the very nice presentation. Um, I was wondering, um, you know, you, you, for obvious reason, are, are um, Kind of have started with a selected number of applications, like for example, using Gromax heavily as your MD engine. But um, can you comment, you know, how easy would it be to have other engines there, like for example, let's say NumD? Yes, yes, that, that's a very good question. I mean, it, in my experience, I, I, I developed a web server that was able to, <clears throat> like 10 years ago, that was able to run uh, setup, to perform setup and run simulations for Amber, for NumD, and for Gromax. So it's all, uh, it's just uh, the only thing that we need is to understand how to prepare everything, all the steps that we need. And once we have that, uh, I would say that uh, integrating that in the BioSkill building blocks is, is really straightforward. Uh, we actually have a template, <clears throat> uh, I haven't said uh, anything about that, but we have a template in the GitHub repo that you can, well, everybody can use. You can download the template and just modify what is the tool execution. That means that, that the command line interface that basically you are wrapping. So once mm -hmm. you have this this line, I would say that integrate that in the BioXel building blocks is really easy. So yes, uh, of course, we are thinking about NumD, we are thinking about Amber now. The thing about Amber is a license, which is another thing that we need to discuss yeah. another day. We don't have time for that, but <clears throat> but yes, we have problems with Bioconda and the Conda packages because we cannot distribute that, but uh, we can use uh, and we can um, build this kind of BioXL building blocks 
anyway, because we are prepared to use software which is compiled in the same, uh, in a particular infrastructure. So in the supercomputers, we are not using the Gromax installation that comes from the Conda package, but you, we are using the installation that is compiled for the particular infrastructure. So yes, there's a lot of things yeah. to discuss here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that answer. Um, the next question we have is from uh, Giorgio Tambo. Uh, Giorgio, I have unmuted your microphone. If you would like to ask your question, please go right ahead. Okay, well, thank you very much, uh, first of all, for the very nice talk. Uh, I'm sure if I had this during my PhD, that would have saved me a lot of, uh, a lot of hours and a lot of wrangling uh, with the bar scripts. Um, <laughs> Now, currently, I'm working in the industry, and so I know that it's quite difficult to get access to um, most uh, software simply because you have to pay for them. Um, and so are, are all of the uh, building blocks free to use also for industry, or is some of them to come at, at, at a price? For instance, NAMD, I know it's not free to use uh, in the industry. Yeah, well, the only thing that we are doing in this library <clears throat> is wrapping this kind of software. So uh, if NAMD is not free to use for uh, industry, uh, we cannot do anything about that. We just can write the wrappers on that so that you can use workflows uh, on top of this, so using the building blocks, but you still need this license if the software that is wrapped behind needs a license. So we have, for example, <clears throat> excuse me, we have uh, a wrapper on top of Modeler, and in this case, we can even um, share, distribute the software because they have a Conda package for that. But if you mm -hmm. don't have the key license to run this uh, modular software in your own machine, you cannot run this workflow. So it's this is uh, a kind of a uh, um, problem in reproducibility, but we cannot do uh, anything about that. We have uh, started uh, just you know selecting all the tools that we know that are free to use. Uh, you can imagine as uh, Gromax, PMX, uh, all of these mm -hmm. workflows, um, sorry, tools. Uh, but yes, we can use this. So we can, uh, we are compatible with this kind of software, but we cannot do anything about the licenses that are behind. Of course, of course. Okay, well, thank you very much. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, thanks again for that answer. Uh, the last questions we have are from uh, Dikeos Sumpasis. Uh, let me try that again. Uh, Dikeos, I cannot seem to, I seem to not be able to unmute your microphone. I apologize. So um, in that case, I will ask the questions for you. Uh, Dikeos wanted to know, um, can, uh, can any Anaconda install work with uh, these um, building blocks. So for instance, uh, specifically, uh, does the An Anaconda installed on Windows 10 PC work? Uh, that's a aware? good question. It, it, it works. We have tested that in the virtual machine inside the Windows 10. Uh, if that is what uh, he or she is referring to, uh, yes. Um, the thing is that, of course, you need it's Anaconda 3, and then if you have like this kind of uh, mini conda or the different approximations which has a uh, less number of packages installed, the packages that uh, are needed will be installed anyway. But the, well, the, the short answer is uh, yes, as far as I know. Uh, we have tested that in the virtual machine, Linux virtual machine inside the Windows 10 uh, operative system. Great, thank you very much. Uh, with that, we have no more questions. Um, I'd like to take a moment to thank Adam again for this very interesting uh, presentation, and also to mention that there are a couple of um, other BioExcel webinars coming up. I believe, Adam, you have a slide showing upcoming seminars? Yes, let me see if I can one. move to that. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, for instance, uh, next week on Tuesday, we have a special edition. Uh, we're running a summer school, and the students, uh, uh, there will be a student webinar for that summer school um, happening on Tuesday at uh, 1500 uh, CEST, 
uh, so European time. And then in uh, October, we have um, a talk about Mollywood streamlining the design and rendering of molecular movies. Uh, the method for joining us for these talks is much like the method for joining us for the talk that's just, that Adam has just given. Uh, with that, thank you again, Adam, for uh, this very good talk, and thank you, everyone, for uh, coming to this webinar.